such a job. In fact, the MPs, one of them voted against his uh, approval. Yeah, quite. When I found out, because initially we were told it was as he was totally unanimous yes. and everything. Interesting, I was with the MP, this uh, Alassan Suhini on yeah. Metro TV, mm. Good Morning Show, and he disclosed that he was the only one who dissented. I thought it was that mark of courage for a young man mm. at this mm. level, a young legislator. He disagrees, he puts it out there. In spite of the fact that his colleagues on the minority side who belong to the committee didn't share his... Uh, Do you agree with him? He says that no, I dis I Martin Amidou is overqualified, yet, no. yet on certain scores, he finds that he should not be the one to be no, giving I that I disagree job. with his reasoning. Okay. But I admire his courage okay. to say that, look here, I'm not going to go along with the wave. And this is my reason why. And sticks there. I, okay. I admire that. So, okay. so was Martin not unnecessarily difficult during the vetting? Was he not unnecessarily emotional? Yeah. Getting yeah. angry unnecessarily? Uh, things were said in jest. He took them so serious. Yes, but when I read through this mm. act, mm. at 959, none of the things you've raised mm. temperament disqualifies him <laughs> so <laughs> i really <coughs> wouldn't make that point i've made mm. the point mm. that nobody's perfect martin who i've known for close to 40 years or so is not a perfect human being mm. and has his weaknesses here and there no doubt about that and some showed at the vetting mm. But if you aggregate, if you were to act, and it's legitimate to raise those issues mm. and interrogate them. Indeed, I believe that the end effect will be helpful for him mm. as he listens to us and mm. people who are raising all those things. Okay. You remember initially I made a point that this kind of office, this nature, this everything could tame him also. Mm. So I don't have a problem at all. Those who are interrogating those weaknesses or those issues about temperament, emotional instability, all those things are legitimate. They you say tame. His friends say he will walk out of that office <laughs> no, uh, if, within if the first few cases. No, if he did walk out based on interference, unwarranted, mm. and not in accordance with this act, I will stand up and salute him. Mm. It will be good for this country. Mm. But just a bit about where you said, when you look at the act, the qualification that he needs to have do not include the things on the basis of which Suhini voted against him. He will tell you there's one. Which is? He's supposed to be a person of high moral integrity. High moral was, character and proving integrity. And proving integrity, just yeah. like a judge. Yeah. And he had disclosed or admitted that... There were certain allegations of corruption and, you know, thievery he made against the Mahama administration that were on <coughs> mere perception. Well, we take the corruption perception index of transparency international so serious in this country. They say perception, and yet we take them serious. I'm not saying per perception is not entirely useless. Mm. Indeed, before the nurse thing, people were using perception as a basis to say that there was corruption in the judiciary. In fact, the parliament of Ghana had a report to that effect, mm. only for proper investigations to bring it out. But I'm saying that he's not perfect, so some showed. Mm. You remember, I had a running debate with him on this program relative to the Tiger Eye and Asting. If you recall, right. you put him on the phone mm. and I was seated here. Yeah. We had very serious debate. Beyond that, we still kept our friendship. He's not perfect, but I'm saying that those areas, if you even aggregate them, create a critical mass of the human feelings of Martin Amidu and put it together, it will still not disqualify him okay. relative to what is here. That's the point I am making. Right. And that is why all the members of the committee, with exception of one, voted for him. At least, unless that too is not true. Mm -hmm. And they are now going to present it to the House. Obviously, in spite of that, there could still be debate. Even if you say people should be uh, vote uh, by consensus or majority decision, uh, 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 unanimity, they still can discuss. They still debate. Yes, sir, I have yes. a couple of examples in the parliamentary history mm. here, answered in this country. Mm. And I'm sure uh, uh, Muntaka will help me out mm. of that. So to be honest with you, I think he performed... You see, it's his character. That character that some people are worried about mm. is fit for purpose. The corruption in this country, that monster called corruption right from the Nkrumah days to today and how we've tackled it we've used guns and things all oh, we are still back almost to square one 
dealing with it. So those who find him a bit unpredictable, temperamental, that if he will walk out because somebody interferes, I said that man is fit for purpose. That's the way I see it. <laughs> if you want us to go into specifics, then we can. But the question you asked me... Do some I, of it. Do some of it. Just a bit of it. Mm. Well, you see, uh, for instance, the question of uh, the perception team. You take the Charlotte Osei and President uh, Mahama's issues. The answer he gave within the platform, on that platform, I think was key. He had to. The Charlotte says to him, what was he supposed to do? Was he supposed to rehash the things he had said? When indeed we have a CJ committee at this time sitting on the matter, on issues, some of which connect that matter. I don't know whether you know that some of the allegations, of course, they've been thrown into the dustbin. I'm not sure what I'm entitled to say, but some of them come up with a lot of things, attempt to influence the Lotra Commission, the direction of the NDC, dismissing some district officers who are MP, perceived to be MPP, uh, posturing that was sending this country into uh, uh, some insecurity because of the, how he was, he was managing the election. Okay, the Chief Justice has cautioned against discussing exactly, the material that's before that committee. Seeking guidance from you. Mm -hmm. In the same, but exactly. So if he was to respond to that question and to elaborate, what you are cautioning me against would have happened there too. How about those other matters? Which and those other allegations that he simply said because the people were not present in parliament. Yes. And the accusation, yes. the counter to him is that when you were making those publications and speaking to them on the media, what do you mean? See, the people didn't have to be with you. You, you, and know, you went ahead you and know made what I like I like the vetting mm -hmm. uh, and the openness of it. It's um, it's, it's a form of therapy. It helps all of us. He's not the first person to appear before parliamentary vetting <laughs> committee and make retractions and apologies mm. or give some rationalization. Mm. It's not. But it's, it's very helpful because once you get there and you are questioned, the answer you give itself helps all of us to put you in, in a certain level. I am saying, for instance, the tiger mm -hmm. eye announced him. Right. He said, announce is not there for me to rehash all those things. But at least... There are two things I said. For instance, the service passport thing. And I itself considered publicly, confirmed it. But since then, do you know what has happened between the two of us? Mm -hmm. huh? And a lot has happened. So why should he come to the committee and rehash those things? I'm not complaining about those who ask the question. <laughs> that, that's, that's your right. They could ask the question. But the answer he gave, I say, was appropriate. Mm. Did you hear him refer to Ajet Assam as corrupt? Ajet Nassam. Ajet Nassam as corrupt. Where is that coming from? Of course, the... The work of the Anas. Right. Huh? Mm. So what it means is that as a human being, over a period, reflecting on all the issues, getting details. Don't forget he contested the NAS methodology mm. and legality. Mm. But he's come to the conclusion that, look here, at the end of the day, this is what happened. That work had some value for the state of Ghana. So to be honest with you, my view is that those who can, you can decide to take all those weaknesses, put them together. It is not enough for us to disqualify to suggest that he's not suitable mm. or competent mm. enough for the job. Otherwise, okay. Muntaka them should tell me how come they decided that he should go through. <laughs> okay. Well, you you surprised me the most in in the in the interrogation that he went through. Okay, the questioning. Because you I found you to be very calm and yet very effective in doing what we typically do in court by way of cross-examination. <laughs> you ruffled him, and I have sa said that we lawyers enjoy it. When you get a stubborn witness, mm. you are excited to ruffle them, get them angry and agitated, mm. and then get them un unsure of what they want to say. Mm. I think you achieved that with him. Mm. So, how come you were part of the unanimous people in approving them when you didn't seem satisfied <laughs> With the answers he gave you. Well, thank you very much. I mean, uh, not unanimous. Okay, those who approved them. Let me let yeah. me let me say this. 
I had the greatest privilege of sitting on that committee since 2005. And I've seen people come and go. And I've learned one cardinal principle. 